Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to do a A-level question from paper 3, Feb March 2024, variant 32, question 3. The question says that G Limited manufactures and imports home appliances for local sales. Manufactured goods are for low income customers, while imported goods are for high income customers. Information at 31st December 2023 extracted from the books of account was as follows. Inventory at 1st January 2023, direct material was $46,000, work in progress $21,000, finished goods imported $36,000. Manufactured and transfer price was $56,400. Non-current assets at cost machinery $225,000. Office equipment $124,000. Provision for depreciation at 1st January 2023. Machinery was $107,000. Office equipment $74,000. Revenue imported goods was $378,400. Manufactured goods $498,000 Purchases imported goods $226,000 Direct materials $133,000 Carriage inwards imported goods $4,200 Direct materials $6,900 Direct wages $148,000 Manufacturing expenses $45,400 Office expenses $204,000 Further information is also available. First, G Limited applies a constant rate of factory profit of 20%. Second, inventory at 31st December 2023 was as follows. Direct materials $36,200. Work in progress $25,800. Finished goods imported $39,600. Manufactured and transfer price $51,600. Third, Machinery and office equipments are depreciated at the rate of 15% per annum using the reducing balance method. In the habit of the question, we are asked to prepare the manufacturing account for the year ended 31st December 2023. We'll start with our working notes. We have machinery and office equipments are depreciated at the rate of 15% per annum using the reducing balance method. In reducing balance method, we calculate the depreciation on net book value or the carrying value. For this we start with the cost of machinery which was given as $225,000. From there we subtract the provision for depreciation which was given as $107,000. We get the net book value or the carrying value of machinery as $118,000. And on this $118,000 we apply the rate of depreciation of 15%. We get the value of depreciation as $17,700 for the year ended 31st December 2023. Then for the depreciation for office equipment, we will calculate it in the same way. We will start with the office equipment at cost which was $124,000. From there we will subtract the provision for depreciation to get the net book value. And the provision for depreciation which was given was $74,000. Now we get the net book value or the carrying value as $50,000. And on this the rate of depreciation which is given is 15%. So for office equipment, the depreciation for the year ended 31st December 2023 will be $7,500. Now let's make the manufacturing account for the year ended 31st December 2023. We start with the direct material opening inventory of $46,000 plus the purchases of $133,000 plus the carriage inwards of $6,900. From there, we subtract the closing inventory of direct material of $36,200. We get the cost of material consumed as $149,700. Then we add the direct wages of $148,000. We get the prime cost as $297,700. Then we add the depreciation for factory machinery which was calculated in the first working notes as $17,700. Then we add the manufacturing expenses which was given as $45,400. We get the total as $360,800. Then the opening work in progress of inventory will be added as $21,000. The closing work in progress of inventory will be subtracted as $25,800. Then we get the cost of goods manufactured as $356,000. Furthermore, it was given that the factory profit was 20%. Factory profit is a markup and 
markup is calculated at the cost so we'll take the cost of goods manufactured that is three hundred and fifty six thousand dollars and multiply it with twenty percent we get the factory profit as seventy one thousand two hundred dollars so when we add this that is three hundred and fifty six thousand dollars plus seventy one thousand two hundred dollars we get the manufactured good transfer price as four hundred and twenty seven thousand two hundred dollars which will be transferred to the statement of profit or loss Furthermore, additional information is given. The profit for the year before office expenses and depreciation of office equipment amounted to $289,800. In the bit of the question, we are asked to prepare a statement to calculate showing clearly the cost of sales, how much of the amount was derived from first importing. So for the profit we'll start with the sales revenue of the imported goods which was given as $378,400. From there we subtract the cost of sales in which we have the finished goods opening inventory of the imported goods which was given as $36,000 plus the purchases of the imported goods which was given as $226,000 and the carriage inward which was given as $4,200. From there we subtract the closing inventory of the imported goods which was given as $39,600. So when we subtract this we get the cost of sales as $226,600 and this is the cost hence it have to be subtracted from the revenue to get the profit. So from $378,400. We subtract $226,600, we get the profit from importing as $151,800. Next we have to find the contribution from the manufacturing unit. So we'll start with the working notes. Why? Because here when we talk about the manufacturing goods, we have transferred the manufacturing goods at a transfer price that is it also includes the factory profit and based on the prudence the profit till the time it is not earned it should not be recorded so for this what we will do is we'll find the increase or decrease in the provision of unrealized profit and whenever there is an increase in the provision of unrealized profit that means the closing inventory was more that means these goods have not yet been sold and whenever there is an increase in the provision for unrealized profit we subtract it as this profit is not yet earned However, whenever there is a decrease in the closing stock or the closing inventory, it means most of the goods which have been transferred from manufacturing unit have been sold and hence the profit have been released or earned. So then there will be a decrease in the provision for unrealized profit and this decrease in the provision for unrealized profit will be added. So for the provision for unrealized profit we have uh, the formula that is the inventory at transfer price times markup percentage divided by 100 plus markup percentage that is we are converting the markup into the margin and this is a formula that is A divided by A plus B. So here the inventory at transfer price which we are going to see will be the opening inventory and the closing inventory. Either you can calculate this separately or you can take the opening inventory from there you subtract the closing inventory and then multiply it with 20% and divide it by 120%. So we'll get the value as if when we subtract this two we get the value as $4,800 times 20 by 120 we get the decrease in the provision for unrealized profit as $800. So now as we are done with the working notes, let's find the profit from manufacturing. We'll start with the sales revenue which was given for the manufactured good as $498,000. Then the cost of sales have to be subtracted from the sales revenue to get the profit. So we will start with the finished goods of opening inventory which was given as $56,400. Then the transfer value of the goods manufactured which we have calculated in the bit A of the question and we got this as $427,200. From there we subtract the closing inventory of uh, 
the finished goods which was given as $51,600. Now we get the cost of sales as $432,000 which will be subtracted from the revenue of $498,000. We get the profit as $66,000. Now in manufacturing we also have the factory profit which is also the part of profit hence we are going to add that which we have calculated in the bit of the question as $71,200 and the decrease in the provision for unrealized profit which was calculated in the second working notes as $800 will be added to this. So we get this total as $72,000 and the profit which we have calculated previously which was $66,000 plus $72,000 and the total profit which we will get from the manufacturing will be $138,000. In the CBIT of the question, we are asked to calculate the profit for the year ended 31st December 2023. The profit excluding the expenses and depreciation was given in the additional information as $289,800. From here, we subtract the office expenses which was given as $204,000 and the depreciation of the office equipment which was calculated in the first working notes as $7,500. Then we get the profit for the year as $78,300. Furthermore, additional information is provided which states, a director is of the opinion that the profit for the year for 2023 can be improved by increasing the rate of factory profit to 25%. In the debate of the question, we are asked to explain the impact on the profit for the year for 2023 of increasing the rate of factory profit to 25% in 2023. Let's do the numerical calculation to understand this and then we'll proceed and answer this question. You see we have calculated the cost of good manufactured in bit A of the question. So this will remain same. Why? Because we are not changing the expenses. We are just changing the rate of the factory profit. And previously we have taken the factory profit as 20% and we have multiplied it with $356,000. We got the factory profit as $71,200. Now the rate of factory profit will be changed to 25% so it will be 356,000 times 25% which will be $89,000 and the transfer price previously which we got was 356,000 plus 71,200 we got the value as $427,200 now it will be 356,000 plus 89,000 which will be $445,000 the difference between the factory profit will be 89,000 minus 71,200 which will be $17,800 and the difference between the transfer price will be 445,000 minus $427,200 which will be $17,800. So here the difference between the factory profit and the difference between the transfer value will be the same that is $17,800. So this will be mentioned as the transfer price will increase, the factory profit will increase and both will increase by the same amount. You see in the bit B of the question when we have calculated the profit from manufacturing what we did we have calculated it by taking transfer value of goods manufactured as $427,200 and this was uh, added to the cost of sales and we calculated the gross profit there. So if in place of $427,200 if we take the transfer value as $445,000 then what happened the cost of sales will increase with this value that is $17,800 and our gross profit will decrease by $17,800. However after getting the gross profit we add the factory profit and previously we had added the factory profit as $71,200. Now we are going to add the factory profit as $89,000. So we are subtracting $17,800. We are adding $17,800. So the overall change will be nullified. There will be no impact because one value will compensate another value. In the same way, if we see the value of finished goods of inventory will increase and this will be cancelled out by the balance of provision of unrealized profit which will also increase. So this will cancel each other out as well as here if we see the factory profit which increases will be cancelled out by the cost of sales which will increase with the same amount. Hence we say that these changes compensate one another and there is no impact on the profit for the year if we change the factory profit from 20 to 25 percent. Furthermore, additional information is given which states that 
Gilimited is experiencing serious increase in the cost of the imported goods and has increased the selling price. Many high income customers are complaining about these increased prices. The directors are considering manufacturing home appliances for these customers to keep the price low and maintain their profits. In the EBIT of the question, we are asked to advise the directors whether or not they should manufacture home appliances for the high income customers to maintain the profits and we have to justify our answer. You see G Limited is ma already manufacturing home appliances for low income customers. Now if they start manufacturing appliances for high income customers then what happen is this will help them to increase the level of production and they may achieve economies of scale which in turn leads to synergy and improves the productivity and efficiency of the company and this will help them to reduce the cost or keep the cost low as well as the price at a lower level and this will attract more customers furthermore they already have the experience of manufacturing the home appliances so this experience can be reaped more beneficially if they produce high income customers home appliances as well and this will not incur any startup cost for them furthermore the high income customers are already buying the appliances from G Limited so they are aware about the customers and this can be used for increasing their sales and providing customers with a better quality because now they are the one who are producing it so they can provide the goods of a better quality at a lower price and this will reduce the sales return as well. However, the increase in the production may require additional machineries to be purchased which may require additional capital or increase in the loan and this will lead to increase in the interest which they have to pay. Furthermore, a more advertisement may be required to attract more high income customers as well as the workers may require additional training to fulfill the requirement of the production which may increase the cost of production. Although there are certain drawbacks when they produce the home appliances for high income customers but the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Hence, I suggest that G Limited should manufacture home appliances for high income customers to maintain their profit. So, with this, we have completed this question. Thanks for watching my videos. Have a great and peaceful life.